Four years ago, when I was struggling so much to let go, I would turn to this thing called Tamma. And even though I don't practice it full on or go to the temples as often, but I always come back to it to find my anchor. And it has significantly contributed to my mental well being and allowed me to thrive to my fullest potential up to this day. So, without further ado, let's get started. Teaching 1. In other words, don't hinder your own growth with your own suffering. You deserve to experience happiness no less than others around you. And this is something that really resonated with me recently because I felt like I kept holding back my potential by dwelling in my own past suffering. A lot of times when I used to have Instagram and snoop through other people's lives, I would always wonder why don't I deserve to experience those small doses of daily happiness like everybody else does. And those happiness doesn't come from luxury vacations or anything like that, but a simple meal with a great friend, simple laughters, going to an event, just being able to smile and laugh at the mundane things. Why didn't I deserve to experience those things that I see other people having? And the simple answer was that I had this self-concept that because I am Patty and I'm born into this kind of family dynamic, I'm born into this kind of situation and therefore my situation is unique and if I was destined to suffer, then that is what my destiny will be. But all of this is just a self-fulfilling prophecy and as long as you decide that you deserve to experience experience happiness no less than other people around you, then you will start to let go of the resistance that comes with allowing yourself to receive, giving yourself permission to actually breathe, be present and stop taking in other people's bullshit. This is such a powerful way for you to keep leveling up because you need to experience fulfillment as you grow along your journey. Which leads to teaching two. In other words, the best gift that we can have is the gift of being an ordinary human being who is content with what they have and who they are. And even though this phrase sounds so simple and logical, but it was something that I struggled with my whole life. I did not want to be ordinary. I've always enjoyed challenging myself and wanting to experience different parts of life. But the weird thing was that I was actually in a family dynamic where everything that I do was criticized. So the constant rejection and feeling the need to defend myself against my family member would then lead me to feeling like I don't have the right to be a happy ordinary human being when actually I find a lot of happiness from just being able to let my guard down and not constantly hustle or try to be who I'm not today so even though I'm excited to achieve extraordinary things but there were so many moments where I just wanted to enjoy who I was right now and be content with the version of me who hasn't achieved my personal goals yet but because I was constantly finding myself in arguments where I have to justify the reason why I made this decision is because it's going to make me wealthy in five years and literally I'll be told but why can't you earn money now why can't you be happy right now and because I was young at the time and these statements came from my own family member it just made me feel really confused as to whether there was something wrong with me whether I had mental issues or I was just a very troubled person so it made me feel inferior to everything outside of me so you have anybody that's constantly criticizing you even out of unconditional love constantly putting you down putting your self-esteem down and making you feel like it's wrong for you to appreciate your inherent worth as an ordinary human being. I want to remind you that you have the right to experience happiness exactly for where you are right now, as a content ordinary human being who is fulfilled with who they are. Teaching 3 in other words, anchor yourself in good deeds and all the right things will flow into your life naturally. When we have ill will towards other people, which I used to have towards all the men that used to hurt me, that was just me also subconsciously projecting all my shitty <coughs> energies at them. But when you anchor yourself in good deeds by simply thinking good thoughts for other people, simply sending positive energy to other people, then that means that you will be reciprocated with the same level of energy energy. Now, I don't want to say that I'm an expert at this, but I feel like it has some correlations with the law of attraction teachings. It means that if you vibrate at a very high frequency, which is filled with unconditional love, acceptance, being in the present moment, then all these things will boomerang back at you, which then allows your life to manifest more effortlessly. But in Thai teachings, the good deed may mean you go to the temple and do this thing called tambun. It pretty much means to give your blessings to others, but in a traditional way. But honestly, even if you don't go to the temple, you could still 
give your blessing to others through meditation, through focused energy and sending telepathic messages that really reinforces to them how worthy they are as a person. So good deeds can come in many forms. Some people may be giving food to the homeless people. Some people may donate to charity. Some people may help other people with their sufferings. And all of these are good deeds as long as your intention is pure and there's unconditional love behind it. So I find that the more you raise your vibration to the point where even if you give this person love and they don't give you the same kind of love back in return, it doesn't really affect you because your energetic field is so high. And that's when everything will flow into your life. You become a magnet to all the abundance that you want to create because nothing that you do is transactional. Whether you give this person love or not, it doesn't take away from your cup because you have so much more than enough to share with other people. And that all starts from you anchoring yourself in good deeds, thinking beautiful thoughts, thinking positive and kind thoughts for other people, but also for yourself. Teaching four. In other words, always remember that all the bad things that come into your life, even though they can come in, they can also go out at the same time. And this is also very similar to the Stoic teaching by Epictetus, all the suffering he went through, yet he was able to come on the other side of it. It teaches me that just because you are experiencing so much shittiness harassing you, it can't take away your ability to respond to it proactively. And even though this teaching sounds very, very logical, but a lot of times when we are suffering in the actual circumstance, it feels like we are so unique and nobody else is suffering the same way that we are suffering right now. You have to understand that you cannot stop other people from wanting to swear at you, cuss at you, put you down or demean you, but you have the 100% ability to control yourself from not engaging vibrationally with it. And when I say engaging vibrationally, you can still be aware that you're getting harassed. People are trying to hurt you. People are trying to dim your light, but in your consciousness, you are no longer feeling victimized. You don't actually feel anything like, I want to get back at them. I want to seek revenge. I want to prove my worth to them. All of this, even though it sounds like you're letting go, but it's still attached to the outcome of wanting to get back at someone. But when you actually know that all the sing rei which is all the sh** that comes into your life can also flow out of your life, it means that you have the knowing that you don't have to do anything or engage in a lower vibration and dim your own light to fight back anything that's trying to hurt you. You don't actually win by fighting a battle that's not worth fighting for. So always choose your battles wisely. If this thing is not worth you putting your attention and awareness upon, if this person is not worth you responding to, if this situation is not worth you crying over about or even thinking or pondering about, then always know that you have the ability to walk away from it vibrationally. And when you choose to walk away from it vibrationally, know that all this stuff will actually dissipate along with you, raising your frequency frequency as well. But I guess in Thai tradition, the phrase means more like just be patient and allow things to resolve on its own. You can actually speed up this process by simply choosing to be the operant power of your reality, by choosing to come back to who you inherently are and knowing that there are no circumstances that could truly defeat you as long as you have the power to stay in your knowing, to know that you're always protected because you choose to protect yourself. Teaching 5. ความสุขจะสอนให้เรารักคนอื่นแต่ความทุกข์So in other words, happiness will make you love others more, but suffering would make you love yourself more. And that cannot be further from the truth. When I'm experiencing a lot of happiness, all I feel is that I want to share this happiness with the people that I love. But when I'm suffering a lot, when I'm feeling depressed, when I'm feeling defeated by life, it really teaches me that life only has two options. Are you going to let these situations defeat you or are you going to get back up? And if you choose to get back up, you actually have to love yourself so much that your raised frequency will help you dissipate all these negative circumstances. Now in Thai teachings, they imply that as long as you get to know who you are more, as long as you allow these lessons to teach you to be more resilient, then you will love yourself more. But in my interpretation of it, it will actually help you come back to who you were always meant to be. And if you were the person who always had strength within you, but there was never a situation where you had to prove that strength, then you will never realize your truest potential. You can interpret everything as a positive force for you. Happiness is a positive force in that it helps other people receive love from you. While at the same time, if you do go through bad times, then the person who's going to receive the most love from you, the most compassion from you is yourself. So either way, it's a win-win if you frame everything to work in your favor. So always know that you have the ability to turn any situations around to make suffering be your biggest blessing in disguise and permanently transform you to be the most resilient and badass version of yourself who never gets defeated by any kinds of life obstacles again. Teaching 6. 
ไม่มีใครกำหนดชีวิตเราได้ดีเท่ากับตัวเราเอง In other words nobody could shape your destiny more better than you can In the past I used to always tell my one family member that I'm going to be successful I have ambitions I want to be rich I want to live in that kind of suburb I want to live that kind of lifestyle and what I would be told as a response is but you're not one of them and you'll never be one of them They will never accept you. I can totally see that this is just a limiting belief. This is just a self-fulfilling prophecy to prove the inner identity that you're holding towards yourself. If you have the self-concept that just because you are Thai, just because you are Asian, and there's this bamboo ceiling, just because you're not born into this environment, just because you don't have this kind of skill set, it means that your destiny is predetermined. It means that you cannot escape from this suffering. But I choose to believe that we shape our own destiny. We have the ability to learn a new skill set. We have the ability to improve our mindset and adopt new belief systems about ourselves. But most importantly, when I watch one of Aaron Dowdy's video today, he was giving us examples of this fish where the minute this attractive yellow fish dies and this unattractive gray fish comes and replaces his position, that unattractive beta gray fish would assume the new identity of itself. And it takes about one day for that fish to transform itself into this attractive yellow fish and start having more confidence in their mating abilities. And that's the same with humans. When you put yourself In a constant positive winning momentum, and you adopt the self-concept that yeah, I'm actually destined to be a winner because I see myself as a resilient person. Then you will start to find evidences of why you are resilient. You will find evidences of why you are a hard worker, and you never give up on anything that you do. Therefore, the destiny doesn't have control over you. You have control over your destiny. You have control with what you want to create for your life. And it's surprising because even Buddha's teaching, where it's so oriented towards letting go and being content with what you have. Still reinforces to you that you are the one that creates your destiny. So never let anybody dictate or limit your ability to do things that you want to do. Teaching seven, a d k u f a i chai ti song thang hai kap rau, meaning that the past is like our torch that shines all the knowledge and wisdom for us. I totally vibe with this statement in that all the suffering from your past actually teaches you how to be more loving towards yourself. All the crappiness and all the bullshit that's happened to me has taught me how to draw really sacred boundaries for myself. As a kid, I was watching so much Thai drama, and it's like my belief systems were absorbed around Thai dramas. And at one point, I was even a Adopting this self concept that I only get to know these people as celebrities, and I can only be a fan. But I myself can never step into the version of me who could potentially be a celebrity like them. Because in Thai dramas, especially back when I was a kid, the theme was always centered around the same disempowering storyline, where the protagonist always get beaten by the antagonist, and they have to always cry and let other people defeat them. Nowadays, they try to make the storyline more modern and empowering. But at the end of the day, because my childhood was so Consuming that kind of culture, I didn't understand how to turn my suffering into wisdom. When I suffered from severe acne, and when I was also harassed online before sexually when I was just 18 years old, I felt like there was no way out for me. There was no lessons for me to learn from this. But the important lesson that I learned was that you have the power to say no to anything that doesn't serve your highest good. Even if that means saying no to getting judged by your family, friends, or relatives. Even if that means saying no to your boss. Saying no to friends that don't. Serve you anymore. You have the power to do all of these to mitigate your future suffering. So if you've never went through everything that you've went through, then you would never know that there is so much for you to learn about yourself through this suffering. For example, when I didn't have a therapist while I was having a depression, or at least I was told that I wasn't worth investing in a therapist to heal me, I didn't think I was going to heal. But because I learned that life is so much more precious than drowning in depression, that I suddenly felt like, you know what? I don't want to turn into substances because I want to be pretty. I don't. I don't want to have yellow teeth. I don't want to have pale skin. I don't want to look like a bum. I want to be pretty in my 20s. And because I made a conscious decision that I'm going to be a beautiful, radiant girl, that's how I was able to heal from my depression. I started to create a new self-concept where I saw myself as I deserve to be her. I deserve to look like that celebrity, even if the industry doesn't choose me. But I choose myself, and I know I can look like her. I don't have to position myself as a fan club and feel inferior to anybody in entertainment anymore. I can choose to. Be The open power of my reality, and that is what suffering has really taught me. In that, you really do have so much more resilience and strength within you than you realize, and that is how all of your past suffering shines a light for you. Teaching eight. ถ้าหาคนเป็นเพื่อนไม่ได้
จงอยู่คนเดียว And I totally resonate with this so much. In other words, if you cannot find the right friends, then don't be afraid of your own companionship. And this is so important for teenagers and even people in their early to late twenties to understand is that you don't need crappy relationships in your life. You don't need transactional or toxicity to improve your self-esteem. If you don't belong to a certain group, if certain people don't choose you, if certain people don't accept you exactly for who you are, then don't you o n d i l which means be okay in your own companionship, be okay single, be okay without many friends or no friends at all. Luckily for my case, I thought that I was not going to have any friends as an adult, but instead I ended up having individual friends where we could be our true selves towards each other. We are always empowering each other with inspiring words, but it's not like a flashy friendship where we're going out to parties and taking pictures for social media. But we are just having normal coffee catch-ups, walking together, shopping together, and not posting it online. And honestly, those are just so priceless. There have been many times in my 20s that I was so traumatized by my teenage years where my friend group used to dog me in the playground. They would literally disappear, and I wouldn't know where they are. So I would end up spending the recess and lunch by myself. And in high school, if you are standing by yourself, it makes you look really, really bad. Like you are a garbage. You are disposed, and nobody wants to hang out with you. And if you're only consumed in that world where having friend means everything to you, then who will you be? Where will your sense of self be? And again, this trauma had really affected me in my adult years. In that I would attract so many narcissists, so many toxic people that just want something out of me. Whether it's my designing skill set, my presence, my companionship, my ability to please them and meet their needs. But the minute that I want to pull away and draw sacred boundaries for myself, these people would guilt trip me, saying that I don't work hard enough, I'm a bad person, I disappoint them. And these are not your true friends. A true friend will love you in a way where you always feel free. They will never cage you to a certain amount of time you have to spend with each other. If we're going to meet up once every four months, and that is totally okay because we are best friends. We don't have to hang out every week. We don't even have to see each other every month. So the less condition you put on your friendships, that's when you know you have a real, true soulmate. But when there are so many conditions, when there are so many hoops you have to go through to make yourself feel okay being who you are in their presence, then those friendships don't deserve you. You don't have to be in that dynamic, and you might as well just yo h o n d i l shine your own light and stay where you are, so that you magnetize the right people to join you on your journey. And finally, teaching nine. ความสำเร็จอยู่ในมือเราเสมออยู่ที่ว่าเราจะทำให้มันเกิดขึ้นหรือไม่ In other words, success lies within your own hands, and it depends whether you are going to make it happen or not. Now, these days, a lot of manifestation content teach you that just raise your vibrations and allow things to come to you. But I believe that in this teaching, it is emphasized that you always have to take inspired action in order for things to manifest itself. I can't just sit down and meditate for four hours a day and expect that there's going to be a result that comes out of it. If I want to do a video about Thai philosophy, then I have to kind of study what I'm going to talk about. Get out a camera, dress myself up, and speak about it. That is inspired action. If you guys have a vision of who you want to become, and you guys really want to step into the best version of you, do not be afraid to cultivate the belief that everything is within your reach. Everything lies in your hand. So therefore, as long as you get into an aligned state and you know from within which correct steps you must take, then do take the inspired action. Go all in with your purpose, and you will reap the best reward out of it. Okay, guys. So these are nine Thai philosophies that really, really. Inspired me. Again, if you guys like this video, please let us know in the comments down below if you want to see more videos like this. I'm so happy to keep creating videos for you because the more I create, the more I get better, and the more joy I feel as well. If you guys resonate with my content, feel free to subscribe so that we can grow together on this journey. Other than that, I wish you an amazing week ahead, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.